lines with what can go wrong when there aren't proper regulations in place. So if a product or service is known to be unlawful, are there any moral or ethical obligations on other travel providers not to promote them? So we'll start with you, Julian. <laughs> Yeah. 
anyone's heard of the more recent campaign in uh, Lyon in France, just uh, got pulled down, but um, they were offering a campaign called Avion de Chasse, which is something, something like co-pilot, and they've had um, some hot women offering rides. 20 minutes oh. max, you can book and prepare for that in the book. Uh, and that's enough for me to actually, you know, just, well, there's, there's a couple of reasons why Google's tactics aren't necessarily sharing economy friendly more broadly. Um, but still, again, back to the principle of the convenience, the, you know, the idea that you can see where your ride is, uh, see who your driver is, all of those kinds of things, um, people are always going to prefer for that or legal um, constraints. Sam, um, John brought up there what happens uh, when something goes wrong. Is that an Airbnb consideration? Because every time something goes wrong with Airbnb, it goes all over the world. It, um, it certainly does. Uh, and the thing, the thing with those, when they when they do go wrong, there's certainly isolated instances. Um, if uh, if, it, if it was something that was prevalent, then business wouldn't be growing as fast as it as fast as it is. Um, but I think the thing that we do is we certainly take trust and safety very seriously. Uh, we have over dedicated to trust and safety. Uh, we have a number of regulations um, and uh, measures in place uh, on, the, on the marketplace uh, to ensure that things can go as smoothly as they, as they possibly can. Uh, the reviews that take place, uh, the verification of, of users both on the, on the host side and the guest side uh, were very, were very, very important to us. And so I think ultimately um, if there were things that were going on often, I, it wouldn't be good. And the reality is that it is. Um, the trust is, you know, trust is a very important part of that, and we, we continue to do everything we can to, to build that, to build that trust. Does there need to be regulation though, in the case of someone moves into an Airbnb and then refuses to leave? Well, I think um, I think you're referring to the, the squatter incident in Palm Springs. Um, obviously, again, an isolated incident relative to particular laws in California around squatting. Um, I'm not sure I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that happening anywhere else in the world. Um, and so again, a nice lady instance out of you know, 25 million times, um, probably not so much of an issue that anyone else needs to worry about. Mm -hmm. Sam, I'm oh, sorry, just Sam, Mike, do you think that there is a moral and ethical obligation on what can be advertised with these new, oper new operators? Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, I think there is a technical moral obligation that uh, we Tell the public what the public needs to, to, to be told. And I just want to twist this a little bit, if, you, if I could. Very interesting, you know, um, situation where councils, with their moral and ethical obligation, uh, we have a situation in Sydney where, as a corporation or an organisation, we are told that you can't uh, have uh, people in the service department staying here because it's not designated that. So please remove yourself. Okay? On the other hand, a whole building is designated service departments which we purchase the management rights to. And there are many owner occupiers and long-term residents who are renting. But the council doesn't enforce their moral and ethical obligation. So there's a lot of contradictions and it's not just Sydney. So you know, I think we've got to work our way through these issues. And potentially, companies such as ourselves actually have to challenge those regulatory authorities who aren't regulating themselves. Mm -hmm. Trevor, the lawyer, last thing I've seen. So there's been some interesting, the case laws still evolving on this, there's been some interesting cases. The, uh, because these uh, Airbnb and HomeAway and, uh, and uh, Clicky present themselves as a marketplace or a platform, they just present themselves as a conduit for the information to find. And they do it very carefully because they don't want to take any more responsibility than as a conduit. Because if they go further than that, then they will begin to some liability, and that these interesting cases. One involves a trip advisor ran a survey in the US on what's America's earliest hotel. Yes. And they published the results, and of course, the winning hotel was on Red Wings. And 
sue Triple Buyers for defamation. But it was held that Triple Buyers was just a commune. The opinions were really expressed by all its viewers or readership or, or servers, and they were just publishing the results of their, of their views. And so Triple Buyers uh, was not uh, guilty of defamation. Compare that with a very interesting uh, case in Sydney, where the Fairfax, Fairfax Media's um, food writer did a review of a new restaurant where the guy had spent $7 million setting up this wonderful restaurant at Darling Harbour. And I opened the business and the food writer went along and wrote the most scathing, defamatory review of this restaurant. And Fairfax published it under its, let it under its banner and said, this is our expert food writer, this is what our expert food writer has said about this restaurant. Boom, gone, guilty. Who liable for that question? Because they had actually endorsed they weren't just conjecture, they weren't just letting someone else communicate, they were actually endorsing the news. I think in time though, the platforms will, will travel closer to the economics. There's a principle, a basic principle of law called aiding and abetting. Mm -hmm. So if someone's doing something illegal, let me give you any ideas here, John. Well, if, someone, <laughs> if someone's doing uh, something illegal, and you're doing something which is aiding and abetting them to do that thing that's illegal, there's almost a universal principle I don't know the case yet, but it's an issue that concerns me on behalf of the last clients of mine. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting point. Uh, that there's a difference between a promotion and uh, acknowledgement or comment. Um, so obviously in the case of TripAdvisor, we accept a comment from the general public, which is not necessarily our promotion of that product or the more negative of that product. And there is a, a distinction. And I can tell you that that product is a very interesting experience having a review I don't want to hear before going up with it, and it's because of that case. So we now have procedures in place where if we do want to do a bad review, we have to send a bunch of different people there first, have a meeting, talk to the lawyers, and then run it. So yeah, things did change because of that. But just 